Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. In today's video I'm going to be taking a look at using texture sets to place whatever text you want over different models in the game. So to get started you want to load up the Creation Kit and you want to go under Miscellaneous and Texture Set. And like I just said, a texture set is basically what allows you to place any text you want on top of any item within the game. So a good example of this would be the banners because this is used quite a lot with banners in the game. And basically it just saves you from having to create a brand new mesh and have your textures along with it and upload all of that with your mods. So rather than having 10 meshes for different banners, you've got a single mesh and then a number of different texture sets put over the top of the mesh. So it's just going to cut down on the size of your mod and it's just a much better cleaner way of doing it rather than the game having to load up numerous meshes all of the while. So if we double click on one of these, we'll see that there are different texture sets for each banner, different types of banner, and they all actually use the same item. So if we just go under movable static and search for a banner, if you double click on these, you'll notice that they all pretty much tend to use the same mesh. And if you click edit on the model, you'll see that they've got a texture set and if you remove that texture set, they're all using this base item here, which has a red texture by default. So the texture set just pretty much goes right over the top. Now, the easiest way to create a new banner would be to go under texture set, double click on a banner, and uh, maybe not that one, we'll try a different one. Double click on a banner, and this means that you've automatically got the normal map there, but I'll show you how to go ahead and find different textures in a moment. But that means that you've already got the normal map, you just change the name. So I'm going to call it uh, CT Banner New. And then I'd select the Diffuse. And I would then go find the texture that I've created. So I'll go with that one. OK. Oh, not unique. Make New to then. And create New Form. So I'm using the normal map, it's my own new banner, and then I would go under movable static, click on a banner, edit the model, alt click and new, search for banner, click on my new one, and as you can see it's changed there, and click OK, I'd obviously rename it. Having a problem with the IDs here, so create new, and you would have your new banner in there somewhere, wherever that's gone. There it is. And there's my brand new banner. Now, in some cases, you will end up having different settings from the mesh actually interfering with the texture set. So, a perfect example might be that it's way too shiny. And when you get that, you're going to have to have a little bit of experience with NIF scope and you're going to have to knock down specularity or change whatever other settings are affecting them. So in, in some cases, it may not be as simple as a texture set and you might have to go ahead and create a new mesh. But I'm not going to be showing that in this tutorial. Now, what I will show is what I mentioned before. What happens if, let's say, we want to have a texture set for Dwemer stuff but there aren't actually any Dwemer texture sets in here because texture sets don't list every single texture that the game has it just lists the ones that they use in the creation kit or in the base game to sort of overlay textures so I would have to go ahead and create a brand new one now if you want to know what every one of these settings are I strongly recommend that you go ahead and check the link in the description for the creation kit wiki as it does a very good job of explaining what each of these settings are, especially all the options for decals and such. But this is just going to be sticking to the basics and we're going to create a brand new texture set and we're going to 
do it for the Dwemer stuff. So if we go CT, and I'm just going to put DWE underscore, and I'm going to get the sort of nice design texture. Now, I need this from the game, so what I'm going to have to do is go to my data folder, which I've got a shortcut on my desktop, and I would have to unpack the textures for Skyrim there, and if you actually want to use the high-res versions, then you need to obviously unpack all the high-res texture packs, and my previous tutorial before this one, which will be on the screen now and a link in the description, you'll be able to see how exactly to unpack BSAs so that you can get access to the meshes and textures. So you would probably want to unpack the high-res texture packs for the textures and to get access to the meshes to allow us to know exactly what textures we want to use you're going to want to unpack the Skyrim BSA, wherever that's gone. So the meshes one there. And you can go ahead and unpack all of them if you really want, if you want to be able to access the different files in the game. Now I've already gone ahead and done that, so I'll use BSA opt as I show those methods in the tutorial I just mentioned. And I've obviously got all the files here for the game ready for me to take a look at. So the way I find out what textures I want to use is go to a mesh that happens to have the textures that I want. So in this case it's Dungeons, Dwemer. Let's go with that one there. Oh, maybe not, that's a gold one. We just need something that has the texture that we're looking for. So that one should do. No. Nope. Just want one with the design, so there we go. So this is the texture that I've decided that I, I want to have as a texture set so that I can overlay on other items, and I'll show myself doing that as well. So I've clicked on this here. You'll have to have NIFScope installed. There are plenty of tutorials out there which are going to show you how to correctly set up NIFScope. It's pretty easy to install, simple program to get, uh, free of charge, of course, and you just go under the Nitro shape after you've clicked on it there. Go under the BS Lighting Shader property and you should have BS Shader Texture Set and then you'll see Textures here. Click this down and you'll see that you get the actual path here of the texture. So what I usually do is double click it. I alt click and copy. Go back into the Creation Kit. There might be an easier, easier method but this is the one that I use. I click onto here and I click on data so this should automatically direct you to your data folder for Skyrim if it doesn't you're gonna to have to go there yourself and then I'm going to paste there and just make sure that the path name actually sort of follows through so it's Skyrim data textures dungeons Dwemer ruins and then the rock design or whatever one that you're after so click OK and as you can see if you've done it correctly the texture will show then I'm going to need the normal map for it and it's already actually directed to where it is. Uh, in this case, I have it in my data folder. So that's the trick that I use. I sometimes actually drag the textures in here, but I don't recommend that you do that for every texture because then the game is going to try and load uh, all of the textures loose rather than in the BSA. So you're best off for this actually sticking with this method. So I'm going to double click here and grab the normal map. Click in here, same again, click on data, follow it through, paste, open, and there we go. And if you have anything else, like environmental masks, glow, height, anything else, you're going to need to copy those across as well. But in most cases, this is uh, fine, and advanced users are going to be already aware of what this stuff is and using it anyway. So I'm just going to stick to basics in this tutorial. So I'll click OK. And now let's say that I want to change an item in here. So let's go with a wall. So I'm going to search for any kind of wall. Hopefully a full wall I can see here. Let's just go preview. OK. It's a good example. I'm going to go edit on the model. And as you can see, some meshes will have multiple selections. I'm just going to change the light in there so I can see it. 
for each texture that they've got they'll have different selections and what I usually do to find out which one I'm editing I just alt click and new click on any texture that's there and in most cases you'll see a change and you'll know which part you're editing so I think it's some um, sort of debris along the top there that I'm changing so I'm going to try the next one just click on the texture and I can see that's the main texture so let's say that's the one that I wanted to change I'll click new and I'll search for my Dwemer design one that I've created click OK and now that's sort of a Dwemer wall instead of a white run one and I could actually keep the moss on there however another little trick that I'm going to show you is if you actually want to try and hide certain textures so in this case let's say I didn't want the moss and the debris on the top I can type in null and there is a standard null texture set which will hide them so you can see there's nothing on the top there now and I could do the same with the moss but do be aware that doing this does not mean that that part of the mesh disappears completely it, it just visibly isn't shown there will still be collisions so you can still bump into things so let's say half of that wall with the wall sort of split in two parts and I nullified one side then that side you're still going to be able to bump into even though you couldn't see it and I can click OK I would obviously give it a unique ID and save it and I can go and do that for other white run pieces and build a sort of Dwemer white run if I really wanted to do that So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Please leave comments in the comments section below to let me know what your thoughts are and if you're having any trouble. I might not be able to answer every comment though, unfortunately. So if you've got something very specific, you're best using my contact form, which is on my website, as you can see on the screen there, www.darkfox127.co.uk. You can also follow me on my social media as I'm fairly active, but mostly on Facebook. Everything else is pretty much automatic. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.